Hello everybody. This is a short little video from my car. Just a little thought of um, something that's on my mind and I'm thinking about as I'm working to grow, you know, my business, food by the word here in Indianapolis. You know, it's very interesting and intriguing to me. You know, knowing the history of Indianapolis, knowing the history of of black Americans in Indiana and in the state of Indiana and in Indianapolis. You know, that I learned from my father and everything and then I, you know, study from the readings that, you know, even the book that he's written and from the other things that I've absorbed over the years and the documentaries and you know, things that I've read, you know, to bring us to 2020, you know, and there are currently 243,000 or so um, black residents in the city of Indianapolis, yet you know, our access to capital has never, I mean, probably never been as hard, you know, to, come, to, to even access here in Indianapolis to even build and help grow businesses. And, you know, especially at a time now that we're really, you know, everybody's focused on their businesses and growing their business and adding value and, you know, being able to invest in their businesses and so forth. But, yeah, we moved here 36 years ago in 1984, and uh, the environment was definitely different. You know, my father was born here in 1937, and even coming back in 1984, it was extremely different from what he would remembered. Um, he'd seen it. He'd seen a lot come and go. But the sustainability factor for for black business is definitely, and it's and it's. It's like this around the country, but I'm just focused on Indianapolis right now. The the complication of starting, running, and owning and operating a black business in Indianapolis, you know, is only exacerbated by the lack of capital. That's just the bottom line. The lack, you know, and you know, you know. And, you know, the book, The Color of Money, really lays out the reasons why, you know, access to um, capital in the black community in, in America has, you know, intentionally been, been kept from us. This long, long, short in the story. And now as I look, you know, at Indianapolis and drive around and, you know, see different things and see how we struggle to... You know start operate and grow businesses and this is even pre-covid you know this is pre-covid i mean i mean covid is only you know only showing and demonstrating some things but the overall issues were already here and they were already extremely prevalent and as i go around though and i see you know best intention businesses you know that are here to help breathe healthy lifestyle choices and support healthy lifestyle choices in our communities are nearly impossible to get off the ground nearly impossible because we don't have the funding you know and I look back into my own experiences you know in my early days you know you know managing someone else's business and I look at the you know the, the, the particular brands and so forth and I remember back you know I go back 25 years ago in my mind, and I remember, you know, how did I become aware of certain businesses and so forth? You know, well, you know, we got something in the mail, a pretty picture, and it attracted me to that business, and so on and so forth. And, and I, you know, called that business, and you know, and partook of that business, and became a loyal customer of that business, and then, then subsequently loved that business so much that I got involved in that business and went to work for that business in that order now how you know and that's me you know you know, multiply that by however many you know and that brand is still functional and it's still you know with all the ups and downs of you know massive you know you know I mean massive governmental you know upheavals since then you know through the dot com you know bus through you know the great recession and now in the COVID you know you know companies still you know still operating and functioning and you know and and a 
able to sustain. But anyway, but I use that as an example, though, of, you know, as, as a black business owner, how we do not have access to that sort of leverage. We do not have access to the capital that it takes in order to advertise like that. We don't have the access to the capital in order to do that to grow our businesses. And that's the and that's the the overall issue. You know, we don't have the access to do you know, you know to 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 focus on an area and do a do a mail drop to 28,000, you know, households. You know, with with you know unknowable, you know, returns. You know, for a dynamic, you know, mail drop, you know, of a nice, maybe, you know, just a little, you know, postcard size, you know, um, um, ad advertisement that, that really catches people's attention. We don't have the money for that, you know. It's effective, but we don't have the money for it. We don't have the money for, and we don't have the property that we once had, but we don't have the money and the property to advertise the way that we need to. We don't have to, to gain the local awareness. You know, now we do have social media, thank God, but even even still, because I utilize social media quite a bit, but we don't have the money to do the amount of advertising, even even the social media dollars, um, advertising dollars that, that we need in order to grow our businesses. Now I say all of this, you know, you know, because we are up against machines that are, you know, exponentially larger than us on top of the disadvantages that are built into our you know um, system our, our systemic um, systemically racist system you know that are built in you know with the intentionality of keeping us suppressed um, as, a, as, a, as a people and those issues these issues are real and so, I mean, even today in 2020, in October of 2020, you know, I'm out here right now on the road looking at, you know, just, you know, looking around in Annapolis as I'm trying to, you know, work to grow, you know, food by the word. And, and I see, you know, I see where we once were and I see where we could not hold on to, you know, for a multiplicity of, of, of reasons. But yet I still see growth. I see a lot of growth. I still see a lot of investment. I still see a lot of things being done. I still see this 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 genesis occurring here in town. But what I don't see is us involved in it. What I don't see, you know, I mean, if you were if you were if you were an out of towner and you just came into Indianapolis right now and you drove around for an hour or two, you would be under the presumption that there's not a lot of black businesses here in Indianapolis, just off of what you see, you know, based upon the optics. When the reality of it is, is we're here, but we don't have the affordability to be visible. Or as visible as we need to be, you know, to compete, you know, on 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 the the necessary average level that we need to compete on. So when I think about all of this and put it together and contextualize, you know, what we need to do here in Indianapolis. You know, you know, you get a you get a strange and, and suspicious feeling like Indianapolis doesn't like black people. And I mean I'm more optimistic than that, you know, praise God, that um, you know, not that Indianapolis doesn't like black people, but it's still not favorable for black people. It's not favorable for black businesses. And it has not been for quite a long time. You know, since since, you know, most black businesses were were regulated, legislated, and terrorized out of existence in Indianapolis. These are just facts. You know, these are just facts. You know, when you look through the history of Indianapolis, at one point there were more sections. There was a there was a there was a culture, there was a theme, there were, you know, it was it was noticeably, you know, um, you know, a higher level of black engagement in the economy in Indianapolis. And that has been systematically drummed out, mainly and mostly. 
And so I say all that as as I work to grow food by the word, you know, it's, it's you know, where to get the footing, where to, you know, where to, you know, where's the niche, you know, who's the niche audience, you know, who, who, who do you, you know, who do you, who do you see as your, 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 your market, you know, where's your market at? Well, you know, one thing for sure over the last four years, I've, I've realized a lot when it comes to Indianapolis and when it comes to you know, being a, a black man and a black business owner in Indianapolis, you know, there, there, there are a lot of things that are levied against us, but the reality of it is, is praise be to God, you know, that we have a, you know, through social media, you know, I'm able to get, you know, messages out, you know, and to, you know, speak to people that I normally wouldn't be able to come in contact with. So that is a blessing. You know, God is making the ways, you know, he's making the ways, you know, where men have blocked the ways, you know, and, and, you know, and continue to block. And the one thing that 2020 is revealing is that a lot of people, a lot of people are feeling the press, you know, and they're, they're getting anxious. And so there, you know, there are coalitions that are, you know, strengthening and developing, you know, from a business stand, from business standpoints to, you know, continue to um, insulate, you know, a lot of folks. And, you know, as far as, you know, you know, the black community in Indianapolis, you know, these coalitions are extremely underfunded and they're they're very few and they're they're you know we're lacking a voice we're extremely lacking voice you know we need voice we need strong voice we don't need just opinionated you know um um you know walking around you know just giving you know you know i think this and i think that's no we need application we need active participation you know we need you know to you know lower our noses a bit and and and, and not inspire to you know for you know to be you know amongst those that are that walk in hubris you know we need to you know we need to walk in humility as god has called us to but we also need to walk you know and with the intelligence that he's 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 bestowed upon us and 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 with the strength you know in our backbone that you know we're walking in his favor that's what we have to do we cannot you know, just acquiesce to what's been done and what's normal. But let me even touch on that a little bit. You know, everybody's interested in getting back to the, you know, normal. But here's the thing, and I'm going to be honest. I Normal was never good for black America. Normal was never good for me. You know, I am very not interested in normal. Um, normal is, a, is not a good place. You know, if you're out here walking out your faith and trying to grow and build legacy for your family, especially in the black community, normal is a very bad place to be. Matter of fact, we need to never go back to normal again. And we need to make sure we go forward, you know, in the Lord and really go towards, you know, what he's planned for us and not what man has made for us. So I'm not interested in normal. And normal is a, normal is a very dangerous place for us right now. If we go to normal, if we're striving for normal, we are striving towards dangerous waters. Instead of swimming toward the shore, we're swimming further out into the ocean and expecting and expecting the results of the safety and security of the shore. So, you know, it's not about a return to normal, you know, and we have to make sure that we understand and this is where we have to educate ourselves to what was normal. You know, normal is very bad for a lot of people. You know, for a lot of people, the numbers of people that were leaving Indianapolis was was very high over the past several years. Only over the past you know couple of years have people started to return, and newer people are starting to come in Indianapolis, which is a good thing. But we have to look at you know culture. We have to look at we have to look at the fact that you know it has to be a safe dwelling. You know, Indianapolis is not a safe place for a black man. It's not. It's not safe. It's not. It's not healthy for a black man. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not a menial for, for, for black people, black men and women. It's, it's not, it's not, you know, from a business level, from, you know, from, from, from a health and wellness level. It's not, you know, it's not. And like I say, the same could be said for every major metropolitan city in the country, but I'm just focused on Indianapolis. But that's my little, you know, two cents on that. Um, I just really want to, you know, we got to keep on top of mind that, being a black business owner in Indianapolis is, is more of a struggle because we have systemically built in throughout our entire economic system oppressive um, oppressive um, 
regulations, rules, you know, what, you know, what, you know, what have you that systematically keep us from access to capital and which, you know, keep us in a position of being extremely underfunded, extremely underfunded. You cannot have and or grow a business without funding. I don't care how great the idea is. I don't care how awesome the food is. I don't care how awesome the product is. If you do not have money to invest and grow your business, your business cannot grow and your business cannot thrive. I don't care how awesome the concept is. So, and this is this is the issue that we're faced with. You know, this is the issue that we're faced with. You know, I know those that even have the attention and awareness and can't grow their business. Because why? Because they don't have the money to inject into it and to properly and healthily grow that business, you know, sustainably and, and to do the things that they need to do to get a brick and mortar or to, you know, to build a system, to build, you know, to, to you know, build that conduit, you know, that sustainable conduit that attracts people, you know, that attracts people, you know, so just um, a little something um, off the top of my head. God bless you. I'll talk to you later.